Hello, you are welcome to our channel. In this video, you are going to learn a very interesting application of inductance and electromagnetic induction. This is construction and repairs of AC welding machines. In this video, we are going to show you how to construct welding machines from the comfort of your home. But before we do this, we have a damaged welding machine. We are going to learn with it. Try finding out the cause of its damage and then going ahead to fix this machine. You wouldn't want to miss any of these steps. Please remember to subscribe to our channel, like and share this video. Now let's go ahead to learn. This is our welding machine. It is completely damaged. We are going to learn with it. Interestingly, by the end of our the whole session, we are going to detect the fault of the machine and then try to fix it. The terminals labeled B1 and B2 are the secondary winding terminals. One terminal is connected to the welding tong, while the other goes to ground. When the tong is connected in series with the ground, big A amount of current flow through the secondary winding which generates sparks and heat that is capable of melting electrodes. The terminals labeled A are the input or primary terminals. It is a multi-input welding machine of four taps. These taps are of increasing number of turns and voltage ratings from A1 through A4. The primary winding is distributed on both core A and core B. The arrow there is the termination of starts of the primary windings distributed on these two core sides. We need to disassemble the machine and loose out the windings. While doing this, we must put down the number of turns we loose out both for the primary and secondary windings. The number of turns is a very important data, you will understand this later. One of the easiest way to identify the secondary windings is that they are made with thicker wires. We have removed the top bar, next is to disassemble the top laminations to enable us have more access to the windings. Removing the top laminations. While doing this, you must take note of its arrangement. They can be arranged in different sizes. The best material used for these laminations is the silicon steel, due to its high permeability. Permeability is the ability of a material to allow the flow of magnetic flux. After removing our windings, this is the data obtained. From the start of the primary windings to tap 1 is 90 plus 96 turns. From tap 1 to tap 2 is 7 turns. From 2 to tap 3 is 9 turns. From tap 3 to tap 4 is 11 turns. All these different number of turns implies different voltage ratings. The highest number of turns is from start to tap 4, which is 213 turns. This implies the maximum input voltage rating terminals of this machine. The number of turns gotten from the secondary windings is 40 turns. We do not know the voltage implications of these different number of turns yet. There are parameters we must find about our machine. These parameters will help us to know more about the welding machine, as no information was written on it. Maybe our finding may help us in detecting the cause of the machine's damaging. These parameters are 1. Maximum power capacity of the machine 2. Turns per volt TP, B. 3. Primary voltage BP. 4. Primary current IP. 5. Suitable wire size for primary windings SWG primary 6. Secondary voltage B. S. 7. Secondary current IS. 8. Suitable wire size for secondary windings SWG secondary to find the values of these parameters, we are going to make use of very simple formulas. Maximum power capacity is the effect of voltage multiplied by current which the machine can withstand. It is obtained by the formula. Area of core in CM squared divided by BM all squared. BM is the maximum flux density. For a small transformer like this, we use 1.2 as the value. So our maximum power capacity is approximately 980 watts. 
that is the core area in cm squared and inches squared. So we now see that the size of core has a role to play in the power capacity of an AC welding machine. Next is turns per volt. It is derived by the formula. 7.5 divided by area in inches equals 7.5 divided by 8.13 which gives us 1.29 turns per volt. Next is the primary voltage which is the maximum voltage required to be at the input terminals. It is derived by the formula NP divided by TPV. NP is the total number of turns in the primary windings which is 213. Our VP equals 165 volts. This is an error value because the optimal terminal voltage gotten from alternators and public grids are usually about 220 volts. It is obvious that this machine rated 165 volts has been subjected to voltages of 220 and above. This is our first error discovery. So let's look at the voltage rating of the different taps. From our calculations, the first tap is designed for 144 volts, the second tap is 150 volts, the third is 157, while the fourth and the maximum is designed for 165 volts. Now we have to find our primary current. This is derived by P max divided by VP, equals approximately 6 amps. This is the amount of current required to flow through the primary windings. We need to find the wire sizes suitable for the work. To do this, we look for the amperage range in the amperage column of the SWG table. We look for 6 amps or the nearest value close to 6 amps and then, check the appropriate wire size. For the current value, this is the wire size we loosed out from the machine. It's number 11 SWG and its current rating is 30.69 amps. Our IP is 6 amps. Now we find our secondary voltage Vs. This is obtained by the formula. Vs equals Ns divided by TPV. This gave us 31 volts. The next is our secondary current. This is the maximum welding current of the machine. I, S equals P max divided by Vs. This gave us 31.6 amps. We will now need to find the suitable wire size for 31.6 amps. What was loosed out from the secondary winding is three lengths of the number 11 SWG twisted together. This wire size will have the amperage of about 30.69 times 3. So we see that it is also more than enough for our secondary winding. Initially we knew nothing about this welding machine. But with the help of these simple calculations, we now know everything about the machine and have even know the cause of its damage. This is the whole calculation and the different formulas used. Now we are going to build our own machine correctly. But before then watch our next video to meet more examples for you to understand the calculations better. Subscribe to the channel, like and share the video. Stay tuned.